After my last redesign video, I got a few requests to cover how I made the creature vocals. So I'm going to go through the plugins one by one and explain what each one is doing for the effect I achieved. First is the raw recording itself. This is just me making some crazy sound with my throat into a large diaphragm condenser microphone. I recorded this at a resolution of 96 kilohertz so I could pitch up or down, or stretch it without introducing artifacts. Let me quickly bypass some of the pan and send automation since this was done to match picture. We can add these back in later to show the final effect. Since this is an auxiliary bus processing a few tracks of vocals, my first step is to high pass everything below 80 hertz. This cleans out mud and room rumble from the recording, gives me headroom for generating some bass harmonics later down in the signal chain. Next up is pitch shifting. The worm creature isn't some massive imposing beast, so I wanted the size of the vocalizations to match not only its relative stature, but I played with the foreman a bit to get closer to what I imagine a worm-like creature's vocal cords would sound like. Since it doesn't really have bones or a resonant body, it's basically just a slimy tube. I added just a touch of drive here, which I found emphasizes the high end nicely, gives it more of a hissing quality without sounding too affected or introducing a ton of distortion. Then I've got only a small amount, looks like 17% mix of frequency modulation. This is just a form of tremolo, essentially where it's riding the frequency information up and down, which starts to give the screech its liquidity. In addition to the frequency modulation, I've got amplitude modulation, which is following a sine wave shape, but is strictly affecting volume. So basically just another form of tremolo that ends up adding some growl texture to the vocals by making them sound choppy. I wanted more of a swishy element since worms are slimy and it's coming out of the water preparing to spit some nasty boogers at the player. So this phaser plugin lets you choose the frequency range of the oscillator as I just wanted to target some high end with minimal phaser delays and just a touch of saturation to bring out that swishiness in the high end. Again, only using like 25% because all these small steps add up. The next step in the processing involves a chorus that spreads the voice out a bit across both ears, making the creature feel more intimidating by making it just that much larger and wider. Now, the reason I have this taking place on a different track is because I didn't want any of the bass and subharmonic processing to be affected by the width. I find that trying to spread low frequency detail into wider stereo imaging just makes for a lot of muddiness, especially since humans are notoriously bad at determining the location of really bassy signals. Just try it. Next time you're out and you hear a deep rumble, try to pinpoint exactly where it's coming from. It's not easy. Vocal synth is pretty cool, although I don't use much of it unless I'm specifically doing creature vocals. It's got a bunch of handy modules all housed within one plugin. The BioVox module over here is adding sort of exactly what these knobs say, a nasal and breathy quality to the sound, which adds some air to the overall screeching. <laughs> the 
the polyvox is mostly a pitching module i'm using it here to layer a pitch down formant which almost gives two voices to this creature i'm trying to imply some alien qualities to it something foreign from what we'd expect vocal cords to be capable of and then at the bottom here i'm again just using a chorus effect but this time it's to add some movement to these two modules so they don't remain stagnant. As you'd expect an organic sound to modulate over time, again, all of this is only like a 36% mix. I felt a lot of the high end was lost, so this oral exciter is just generating some high frequency harmonics to fill that gap. And then this multi band compressor is lightly attenuating those peaks uh, so the sound doesn't become too harsh or grating. You'll remember that we cut everything below 80 hertz from the original signal. I just have a high cut here on the EQ to get rid of all the high end. So we're just dealing with the bass frequencies. And instead of using this subharmonic frequency generator to make the room shake during an explosion, like I would for maybe a film or television show, I'm actually targeting a higher frequency band here because I still want it to sound like the creature's vocal cords are producing this. And we just solo this bus. You can hear what it's doing. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear any of this if you're listening on, on like phone speakers or earbuds. The final part of the signal chain is the last EQ and signal saturation. I like to EQ a sound that's a sum of many layers or parts because then you, when you process it all together, it helps glue the disparate elements together since they're all going through the same processing. So here the EQ is just rolling off everything below 40 because let's be real, you're not really going to hear that anyway. And then just taking care of these sort of mid frequencies that are just adding noise. And then these higher frequencies that became a little bit grating. And this last plugin is just adding some saturation, really makes it feel like the creature is like screaming at you and you get that nice bit of clipping without the recording sounding too mangled. This is also where I'll do the reverb and the panning so the sound stays together and sounds as though it's emitting from the common space. Let me add this all back in and we can hear the final sound again.